Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Today we're going to look at some real functioning disc brakes. Stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, so I got them out of the bag here. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. These, I've seen them around before, but these got to be the most mysterious <laughs> parts that I've ever seen from uh, CapoRacing.com. Um, these are the functional disc brakes for the JK um, series, like Wranglers and uh, the Jeep. <laughs> that one's down. But they are like heavy duty steel. Um, they're directional. They got left and right rotor. They have a 12 millimeter hex inside. And you see it's had a nice little machine thing, like a real rotor on there. And it's got a recess in the back. Now these are like ultimate, ultimate scale um, parts, you know. Um, now from what I remember, the original um, Jeep Wrangler that they made, um, it, it had lug nuts that you screwed in these, five, five lug nuts. Now the calipers are crazy. These are these are like amazing. They got brake pads in them, and how you work them is there's a cable that comes in, and it squeezes squeezes the brake pad onto the on the caliper. Now the reason I got these was because I think everybody knows that my what my next build's going to be. Um, you know, it's going to be something probably. Similar to that there, I got it all in order. Because uh, I wanted to put the uh, one of the Toyin uh, four-stroke engines in in the uh, Capo JK. But, like I say, it's all up in the air. And as I was thinking about transmission choices, I know on this here, I used the 3.3 uh, Revo nitro tranny because it had a disc brake on it already um i could easily do that again that the gear ratio is a little wide for this stuff and i think um the weight of the uh, jk is i think around 12 pounds 13 pounds or something so i'm thinking maybe i'll go with a different transmission setup for it um because i'm going to need a reverse but Enough of that. But anyways, these come <laughs> with fronts and rears. Okay, these are your, your fronts because they got the long, super long screws in there that you bolt right through the front knuckle. And like I say, the, uh, I mean, amazing, amazing quality. I mean, it is insane, the quality of these things. You say the, just the lettering itself on there is beautiful. Has a nice little gold, um, and aluminum look to them. I don't know how they hold up in the mud, but and you can see inside here that's where the cable um, and the jacket go through the top. And then on the bottom, there's this tiny, tiny little hole down here. If I can get a focus on it for you, there you go, and right there. It's actually, it looks like it's like a one millimeter hole i'm not sure but i mean it looks big in the film here but so i ordered some um small um steel cable today and i'm going to use the oh it gets a, it's like a plastic oil pressure line um you know for your if you want to put an aftermarket oil pressure gauge in your car because that's the only nylon tubing I could find. I could not find the uh, the parts to finish this. I mean, they got the brakes, you know, the rotors, the brakes, and they have, uh, I can't find the pieces unless they're just not out there yet. But from, from what I hear, the original Jeep had real working disc brakes on it, plus there was one on the transmission. Um, now, the, I guess the, the external ones, these are the optional ones that you had to, kind of put on it yourself and they work off a servo with cables so yeah i was for shits and giggles i was looking at different things now i got this is the k44 rc four wheel drive uh front axle housing okay so these are your vanquish rotors here 
all right, and your Vanquish backs and all that jazz. But I was just kind of wondering, you know, how, um, you know, how scale these things would be if these would fit on there or not. So, anyways, I'm looking at where this would go on here, like so. And you'd have to make some brackets to fit these on. But these, you could put these on your uh, RC Fold drive stuff, you know, or, or whatever. If you can make a bracket for this, you you can uh, you can mount these things right on there. It's basically drilling and tapping a couple of holes or something. But I wanted to see what these were. Now, on this side, I got a wide... Um, 12 millimeter hex on here because this this is kind of wide inside here so these supposedly float over these things like so so there's there's the wide hex on there so there's room for the rotor to float inside the the brake caliper and there's still room to put on your your uh your 12 millimeter rim if you want so that's just a thought. One thing you should do, I mean, these are these are 12 and a half millimeters wide. These are a little wide. I buy these things to play with different spacing on stuff. I actually got these for, oh, my RC four-wheel drive blazer. You can see how wide they are, you know. And uh, when I went to, because I put it together and, you know, with the scale axles and stuff in it, the front wheels... Uh, set in too far for my taste on the on the real blazers the front wheels track wider than the rear So that's why I bought these wide 12 millimeter hexes But from looking at that you could adapt these brakes Right here the capos on anything and you could like say run a servo to these things if you're running a oh a Lipo system with a speed controller a lot of them you can turn down your braking uh, you know uh, function to zero and uh, So you could actually use another channel, so you're not using your um, You know your your motor to slow it down so my thought was on my next build is I'm you know I, my first thought was uh, how am I gonna stop that JK capital JK if I make a nitro out of it um, so here's the answer right here now these go anywhere from like a hundred dollars to like a, almost 145 um, I got these for just over a hundred with free shipping so um, but like I say for and they do work and like I say I don't know how long the brake pads last inside them but I mean they are a work of art you know, I mean, they're truly a work of art. And here's the inside. And you just, like I say, it squeezes the spring and the spring releases it. But they're pretty awesome. So I thought I'd throw a video out there because I got creator's block right now. And I'm waiting for parts. So if you guys are interested in grabbing a set of these brakes, they're all over eBay right now. And it's from Capo Racing. Dot com okay which is hard to get a hold of that company um, but here is the part number it's CD 158274 DB and um, so like I say if you're interested in doing something on your own you can do that um, for those of you who are putting the the toy and four stroke inside uh, I know um, um, Steve at RC Tanks and Trucks, he just come up with a, um, a Frankenstein brake setup on the uh, engine DIY transmission setup that he bought. And it was pretty creative because uh, the way he, he did it, um, he used a nitro disc brake thing and set it all up on there. Um, now I know uh, Kevin Talbot, he's, uh, he's on a build now. So, and he, his build's going to be, you know, <laughs> these builds are getting really epic. Um, he's using a Cross RC, and he was talking about using the Revo 3.3 tranny in it with um, the original Cross transmission, which is a two-speed, to gear it down even more. 
which is cool. But for those of you guys, um, one of the main reasons I used the Revo uh, 33 two-speed tranny was one, it had a reverse, and two, um, it had a disc brake on the back of the transmission. So it was, you know, not only was it a two-speed forward reverse and it had a brake on it, and it was adjustable, um, which was cool. And uh, so some of the builds, the yeah, transmission may not fit. Um, the, the, the gear ratio is a little wide on the thing. So uh, if you guys seen any of the running video of my uh, toy and HTP 407 here, it's more like a off-road, uh, you know, kind of a, it's not overpowered, but it, you know, it does get a little squirrely in second when it shifts on loose gravel and stuff. It seems like it's just at the edge of the threshold of for the size of the truck and, uh, um, you know, the characteristics of it. Because uh, I thought about doing another two-stroke version of one of these, which I still may do. Um, and so I thought about putting like a 25, you know, uh, nitro engine in it or a 28. Um, the thing is, I don't know how much these rear ends can withstand. <laughs> so far, these rear ends have withstood quite a bit with this truck. Um, with the brushless setup I had and with this uh, nitro setup. So I know you get too much power and that's when things start snapping and breaking and wearing out like drive shafts and uh, ringing pinions and twisting axles off and, and all that jazz. But because um, there's when you build something big up here, so I, I know the motor and if I put a 21 in here with the Revo 3.3 tranny, I know that'll hold up. What I don't know what will hold up would be the drive shafts and, um, you know, my outer dog or outer drive shafts on this thing with the dog bones inside because everything gets smaller as it gets lower on, on these electric trucks. And um, that was one of my big problems I had way back in the 80s when I took my one of my bruises and made it into a nitro. Not only did I ruin the tranny, but I ruined both front and rear differentials. And... Uh, but like I say, um, back to the brakes, um, these are, I'll give you a width of what they are in millimeters, zero this puppy out, and these are 374 millimeters, oh, there we go, 374 millimeters thick, all right, and like I say, you got your 12 millimeter hex in there, and overall size um, this would probably be a 2.2 um, brake. It's uh, 37.55 millimeters. So, you know, you, you, this may not fit in a 155 um, wheel. But if you're savvy, you could figure out a way to cut some things down here. But the problem is, is you got to get this caliper to set in behind. Here, it may squeeze in a 1.9, um, but a 1.55, I don't think it's going to fit at all because of the of the distance you have, okay? But for those of you who are, who are you know, are, are scratch builders and all that stuff, and you're building a nitro setup, and um, if you want to go really cool and really scale, here you go. Um, if you want it to serve the purpose, it'll work. Um, if you don't, you know, say you don't want to use the Revo transmission with the brake, um, you know, you got this. So there's some other transmission choices out there and, um, you know, the, the brake's a bonus on them. But if you don't have room for the brake, you know, like I say, here's your choice. Now, I don't know if they would work on these Vanquish um, rotors. I don't even know if they make these things anymore. I bought a couple of sets of these. These are for the, uh, the Wraith back in the day when you know they were vanquish was popping out parts for that thing and uh, these are a little bigger but they're not bigger by much they're just a uh, hair bigger but they're a lot thinner but i don't know i don't think it would be a problem to um for this let's get it up here let's give it a squeeze and see because i think it's more of all just yep yeah, nope She's closed all the way, and this thing ain't grabbing, so it's still loose. So it doesn't close that far for these. So throw them out. Put them back in the bag for later. But, like I say, you could easily adapt them calipers to, uh, you know, an axle 
by making a couple of brackets, making a couple of holes here. Um, the fronts are a little tricky because you got, you know, it has to turn with the, um, the brake system has to turn on the knuckle. Um, and the rear basically is just coming up with a, a clamp bracket for the back to hold the caliper in place. It's going to be tight. So anyway, like I say, I had a little bit of creator's block today. Um, um, you know, when I, I was all excited, I was going to do this video yesterday, but I have an old uh, 85 uh, Blazer. It's one of those M1009 military trucks. And guess what? I was doing brake lines on that because they rotted out up here in this beautiful weather in New England up here. So it's a shame that truck's only got 36,000 miles on it or something, 38,000 miles on it. And it's like never gets driven. But uh, so I did some brake lines on that and didn't get to my video. So I finally got to it tonight. So hope you guys had a great weekend. And like I say, I want to I want to thank um, a bunch of people out there for subscribing. Uh, it means a lot to me. You don't know how much it means to me. Um, Black LA Mass, he's on a build. Um, I want to give him a shout out because he built a really cool six wheeler, and he's having some engine problems right now. But uh, we're trying to work through that. And like I say, Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks and uh, and Kevin Talbot for giving me a shout out. And all you great fans out there. So, anywho, I'll come up with some more videos here and there. And uh, I'll be catching you later, man. Adios.